Hey, put me down. Put me down, I said. Put me down. Hey, put me down. Hey, put me down. Put me down, I said. What are you looking at? Huh? Don't yell at him. He's the creator. All right, I had this idea for an app, but if I don't put a time limit on it, I'll never actually make it. I'll end up just looking at memes every night until I die. So this is the story. Two weeks ago, I'm playing around with Easy AR and I noticed their sample scene for creating runtime trackers doesn't take the whole camera image and make a tracker, but it takes a portion of the camera frame. Interesting. This got me thinking about object detection and how it only gives you the object's position in 2D space. I've always thought that we could do some really cool things if we could get the 3D position. Maybe we could run object detection until an object is found and then take that bounding box and use it to create a runtime tracker. I've always wanted to use object detection and put googly eyes on everything, so I thought this was my chance. I thought back to my last job, Toaster Pets, where we were making an animation creation studio for phones and tablets. It was drilled into my head there that mobile AR and computer vision are great for empowering people to create their own content. So as I let my googly eye idea percolate a little bit, I started to think, well, I might as well just put eyes and mouths on them and let people make videos. So I started to investigate the feasibility of this idea before I did too much work. I was using TensorFlow Sharp for the object detection in Unity, which has since been deprecated by Unity's ML agents because they introduced their own inference engine called Barracuda. The older version of ML agents that I would need is not 64-bit compliant, so getting it up on the Android store was going to be a huge headache. So I started to think of ways I could just validate this idea before wasting all the time. Maybe I could just prototype something with the runtime trackers uh, from EasyAR without object detection. I sat on this idea for a while and it became more and more attractive to me because this way people could actually save the images they want to track and position the mouths and eyes wherever they want. I also thought it could be fun to draw on the images. So eventually I sold myself on the idea. So I'm going to give myself a week to make an MVP and let's see if this is actually fun to play with. First thing I want to do is experiment with some physics and hinge joints because I think it'd be really fun if the characters had like ragdoll type arms. The results are a little bit underwhelming. So I start doing some research and I consult Lord Google about making ropes in Unity, because I think really flappy arms could be fun. But before I knew it, I'd wasted a lot of time. All right, so I just wasted like two days playing with hinge joints and I'm not particularly proud. Like I have a full-time job, so realistically, I only get a couple hours every night to work on this and I just wasted two entire nights. And I'm not, I'm not even sure I like it. I have to actually make some progress today, so one thing I know I will need is serializable data objects that I can write to the device so trackers are persistent between loads. I'll need to be able to store a list of those objects. Each one will need to store a file path to a large image that can be drawn on top of, and a file path of a smaller image, which is what we're going to track. So I construct a beautiful UI and I get some things hooked up. We got a prefab that goes into the grid layout group to store our saved trackers. Now we can at least save image targets and recall them when the app has been restarted. The list of saved trackers gets serialized and saved as JSON in a text file. This way when the app starts up it can read from that file and reconstruct a list of our saved target objects. We can then use those to create our tracker items in our list and to create the trackers in the scene that EasyAR will look for. So my list of saved targets is getting out of hand quickly. We must make a delete function before I go insane. So now that that's working, I need to create an edit screen where I can position mouths and eyes. First we make the eyes. I'm just gonna use some circles and then for the mouth, let's go to Photoshop. Some of you may not know that I'm actually an artist posing as a developer. So let's make a mouth that we can manipulate in Unity. Set the anchor to the top and now when we scale it on the Y axis, it opens and closes pretty nicely. I got these elements on my edit screen and made some drag functionality so they can be positioned. Let's add mouth and eye positions to our savable object and now we are creating image targets like a boss. Oh yeah, I'm throwing out the arms because I hate them. So despite the two days I wasted in the beginning, things are going suspiciously well. So let's add some plugins to screw things up. If you've ever tried to record video and audio from Unity, you know that it's a problem. Recording video is a performance nightmare and using Unity's microphone API is a disaster. Natcam and Natmic to the rescue. 
They cost about $100 to get both, but it's well worth it. I hate buying assets because I like to try to solve stuff myself, but I already know this is a road I do not want to go down. I spent a few hours getting those integrated and working properly. After a few hiccups, everything seems to be working perfectly. So I literally copied the NAT quarter sample scene, UI and all, and just put it in the app. Like, I feel like an absolute disgrace, but like it works, so I don't know, I'm rolling with it. Now this is what I'm excited for, the drawing part. I made a little script for drawing lines on the screen. Every time you press down again, a new line is created. I add the ability to save those lines as a list of lines. Each line is a list of vector threes that contains each point in each line. Now I can recreate those lines again when you load each target, and everything is working great in the editor. When I said before things were going suspiciously well, uh, well here's the part where they go wrong. I build out to test on my Android phone, and my screen space canvas is non-existent. It's just gone. What the actual fuck? I wasted a ton of time trying to figure out what the problem is, and after a few hours, I determined that I have no idea what the problem is. Something about Easy AR is blocking my screen space canvas, I guess. So I use another camera, set the culling mask to only UI, change all my edit screen elements to the UI layer, and now we have a working screen. All right, so today is Saturday. As long as I don't get lost in meme land, I should have all day to work. So I'm gonna try to get the mouth moving with the microphone input today. Um, but I know this is going to be a problem, so wish me luck. I know this is going to be a problem because we did something similar at my last job. I didn't do it personally, but my friend Fatty did, and I remember him saying that it was hard to get working on all the devices since the mic levels are different between phones. My idea was to average the audio samples each frame to get a single float value, create a rolling list of those averages, and then keep track of a rolling min and max volume from that list of averages, that way we could adjust for background noise. I could then pass the current volume to the cartoon mouth and interpolate its scale as a proportion to the rolling min and max. As I'm sitting here reading these words, I'm realizing this doesn't actually work because I don't get a good max value until you start speaking. <sighs> um, anyway, <laughs> I start implementing this and it's not working great. And by not working great, I mean it's not working at all. I thought maybe I could apply a common filter to average the values before adding them to my list and that made it a little bit better, but it's still not great. I start looking into how people do beat detection in Unity, and they always start with get spectrum data, which does a fast Fourier transform on the audio samples, whatever the hell that is. So NatMic is giving me the audio values as a float array, and I can't seem to figure out how to create a real-time audio clip with these values. Lord Google blessed me with an implementation of FFT in C Sharp, so I throw that into the project, and that seems to be the secret sauce. It's still not perfect, so I add a multiplier to the min and max values, turn some knobs, and it seems to be working okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so there's still some problems with like background noise and the mouth starts open a lot of the time, but once you start talking, things seem to get better. I literally spent 10 hours on this today. My code is a dumpster fire and I don't want to work on this anymore. <laughs> I'm not including publishing stuff into the time here because, well, it's my video and I make the rules. But the next day I took about 11 seconds to make a few app icons and a feature graphic. If anybody needs some graphic design work, hit me up in the comments. Uh, now the real kicker here is the App Store approved this thing on the first try. I've never in my life had an AR app approved on the first go with Apple. So if anyone needs me, I'll be at home sitting on my high horse. All right, so I got done editing this video and I ended up pushing an update. I made it so that you can make multiple objects talk. Just click the other one through the screen. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any ideas for this app and let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. Goodbye. Testing. One, two, three. What are you doing? Unhand me, sir. Unhand me.